Asal Hapucha Day. Asal Hapucha Day is another important day in Buddhism. It falls on the 15th day of the eighth waxing moon. Four events took place during the times of our Lord Buddha. First, it was the day of our Lord Buddha's first sermon to the five ascetics in Isipatthana Marukatayawan forest near Benares. Second, it was the day of our Lord Buddha's first disciple. His name was Gondana. He became enlightened as the first dream winner. Third, it was the day of the first Buddhist monk. The monk was Gondana. After he had become a stream winner, he requested an ordination. Our Lord Buddha ordained him as the first monk in Buddhism. Fourth, it is the birth date of the Triple Gem, which includes the Buddha, the Dharma, and the monks. The first witness to the Buddha's enlightenment had occurred. This completed the Lord Buddha's Buddhahood. It meant that the Buddha did not attain enlightenment and kept the knowledge to himself like a silent Buddha. Asalha Pucha Day had its beginning after the Buddha's enlightenment. He spent a period of seven weeks immersed in the bliss of emancipation. After this blissful period, he was concerned that his enlightened knowledge would be so deep and so profound that it might be difficult for beings that are thick with defilements to follow. The Brahma king Sahambadi knew of the Buddha's concern and requested him to give a sermon because there were still beings with less dirt in their eyes. With his great compassion, the Lord Buddha employed the Buddha vision to check all the beings that were still trapped in the three worlds. He saw that there were beings of low defilements and some still thick with them. There were some whose merit was vast and others were still small. Some were easy to teach, others were not. Like the lotus plants that grew in the water, some grew in deep water, some were near the surface, some were almost out of the water, some were not ready to bloom, and some were ready just like beings that could be taught. The Lord Buddha finally agreed to the Brahma king's request. After the Brahma king departed, the Lord Buddha began to consider to whom he should give his first sermon. Who could penetrate the Dhamma readily? He considered the ascetics Alara and Udaga, who were brilliant and their defilements had long been kept very low. They would be able to penetrate the Dharma quickly once they heard his sermon. One celestial being knew of the Lord Buddha's intention. He descended from his celestial castle to inform the Lord Buddhas that both ascetics had already been dead. The Lord Buddha checked and found out that both of them had been dead. He thought that it was indeed their great misfortune because if they had heard the Dhamma, they would have penetrated it immediately. Afterward, he considered the five ascetics who were once very good to him. They had attended to him when he was still a bodhisattva. Therefore, he went to see them at the forest. 
when the ascetics spotted the Lord Buddha from afar, they agreed among one another, Fellows, this monk Godama is greedy. He has stopped practicing self-mortification and is coming here because of greed. Here he comes. We will not pay him respect. We will not get up to greet him. And we will not take his arms bow and his rope for him. We will only prepare a cushioned seat just in case he wants to sit down. Once the Lord Buddha arrived, the Buddha power caused them to forget their agreement. They all got up to greet him. One took his arms bow and rope. Another prepared a cushion seat. One prepared a food bath. Another placed a food stool by the seat. And one presented to the Buddha a food drying tile. The Lord Buddha sat on the cushion seat and then washed his feet. After having welcomed the Exalted One, the ascetics addressed him inappropriately by using his name and an inferior title. Then the Lord Buddha forbade the ascetics by saying, Behold, ascetics, you must not address me by my name or by using an inferior title. Behold, the Tathagata, I am an Arahant, and I have already attained enlightenment on my own. Pay attention, I shall teach, and I have penetrated the Dhamma. Once you have practiced according to my teaching, soon you will penetrate an incomparable benefit which is the ultimate of the holy life. After the Lord Buddha said these words, the ascetics had an immediate reaction. Young Godama, you once practiced self-mortification and could not even then attain enlightenment. Now that you've become greedy and lax, how is it possible that you have attained enlightenment and become a Buddha? After the ascetics expressed their view, the Lord Buddha said, Behold ascetics, the Tathagata is not greedy, nor is he lax. He is here not because of greed. Behold, the Tathagata is an arahant and has attained enlightenment on his own. Pay attention, I have penetrated the Dhamma, I shall teach. Once you have practiced according to my teaching, soon you will penetrate an incomparable benefit, which is the ultimate of the holy life. The Exalted One repeated these words three times. The Lord Buddha continued, Behold, these words that were just uttered have never been spoken before. This is the very first time. Once the ascetics heard the Lord Buddha's confirmation, they were then willing to listen and pay attention to his sermon. The Lord Buddha's first sermon to the five ascetics were about two things that monks should never practice. First, being involved in all forms of sensual pleasure. This lowly nature belongs to commoners, to ordinary people, it does not belong to holy individuals, it has no benefit. Second, the practice of self-mortification is not the practice of holy individuals, it has no benefit. The Lord Buddha then pressed the middle path which led him to attain enlightenment. It includes the Noble Eightfold Path and the Four Noble Paths. At the end of the sermon, the ascetic Gondanja understood what he heard and became enlightened as a stream winner. He was able to attain the Dhammagaya. Therefore, this event marked 
the completion of the triple gem. As a result of the first sermon, celestial beings in every realm, from Earth's sprites to the Brahma beings, all sang the Lord Buddha's praises. The sound resonated through tens of thousands of universes, and an incomparable brightness pervaded everywhere as a result of the celestial powers. We have now learned something about Asal Habuja Day. All of us Buddhists should deepen our faith in the Triple Gem and be determined to practice meditation so that we can attain the Dhammagaya quickly. <laughs>